is no secret that Norfolk was renowned for its practice of Christianity during the medieval period, and as such, thousands of religious buildings dedicated to God were built all across the East Anglian countryside. From small churches to giant abbeys, Norfolk had no shortage of religious sanctuaries, big or small. Nowhere is this more true than the holy village of Walsingham. Hidden within the tranquil countryside of northern Norfolk lies a sleepy village containing the monolithic ruins of a monastic giant. This great arch would have been part of one of the biggest and most dominating cathedral churches in all of Norfolk. This East Anglian county, of course, has no end of heavyweights when it comes to churches, also being home to Binham Priory, Castle Acre, and the unforgettable Norwich Cathedral. But the Priory of Walsingham would have towered alongside them, dominating the local countryside and would have been seen as a holy beacon for miles around. Not a great deal is known about the area before the arrival of the Normans, but we do know that this land was considered sacred by the Saxons as they erected the first church here, naming it the High Grove of Walsingham Parva. In 1061, the Lady Richeldis had a vision of St. Mary, and then built the Holy Church of St. Mary on this site. By 1066, a Saxon named Cattell is Lord of Walsingham, but would have most likely had his lands taken from him as a result of the Norman Conquest. With the help from Norman accounting, we know that Walsingham had a population of around 370 people in 1066, a considerable population for an Anglo-Saxon village of the time. Furthermore, the Doomsday Book goes on to record around 120 sheep and 72 hogs belonging to the land. By 1070 AD, William I enacts the Law of Sanctuary, which allows priories to be a venue for justice seekers. Curiously, the late 11th century and early 12th century records an epidemic of ergotism, which is a mental and usually fatal physical condition in England which led to crowds of people flocking to the holy shrines at Walsingham for healing. Sir Geoffrey de Favachet invites a religious order to look after the Holy House of Walsingham and provides funding for the Priory Church before embarking on a crusade in 1144. A few years later, bulks of stone are unloaded from ships along the River Stiffkey and land is provided for the construction work. Construction of the Augustinian Priory of the Annunciation of the Blessed Virgin Mary begins. By 1180, stone has replaced timber in the majority of the Priory. The new church gains a lot of attention, along with its various holy shrines and relics, and attracts pilgrims from all across Britain and further afield. In response to this, the Augustinian canons begin selling pilgrim badges and trinkets to visitors. King Henry III visited Walsingham on at least 16 occasions during his reign, the first recorded visit being to grant the Priory the right to hold a weekly market fair and vigil on the day of the Holy Cross. Over his multiple visits, he brought generous gifts to Walsingham Priory, such as oak trees from the royal forests and granting elevated status to the canons of the church. One of the most intriguing gifts he gave was 20 marks to make a golden crown which would be laid upon the head of St. Mary's statue which stood within Walsingham Priory. Throughout the 13th century, the de Clare family, whom you may recognise from my recent video about Headingham Castle, became lords over Walsingham, providing further gifts such as granting more land to the Priory, as well as offering a warrant to keep rabbits. In 1277, King Edward I attends Walsingham for Palm Sunday, this would be the first of many visits for the new king. 1280, the first priory is declared completed. From visiting the site now, you'll see a solitary Romanesque arch which is the only surviving remnant of the original Norman stone church. 1307 witnessed the death of King Edward I. Some accounts say that his body was kept at the Holy House of Walsingham before being taken to Westminster Abbey for burial. However, some accounts also advise he was taken to Waltham. Both could be true, as Waltham Abbey would be en route from Walsingham to Westminster, and the caravan of people involved in the conveyance of the king's body would have needed to make stops and breaks during the travel. There are no records of Edward II meeting the canons of Walsingham, but his son, Edward III, visited Walsingham seven times. 
During this time, he granted the Countess of Clare license to establish a Franciscan friary a short distance from Walsingham Priory, to take care of the thousands of pilgrims who are visiting the town of Walsingham. Walsingham continues to be visited by many notable characters during the 14th century, including King David Bruce of Scotland, and even receives permission from Pope Urban VI to elevate the priory to an abbey status, but fails to receive permission from King Edward III. Now, moving on to the 15th century, every village in Norfolk is told to provide archers for the current war against France. These archers proved to be a vital asset at the Battle of Agincourt. Later, in 1421, King Henry V visited Walsingham. In 1431, an inn, possibly owned by the Walsingham Priory estate, is set on fire and burns to the ground. The fire was thought to have been started by the pilgrims, objecting to being overcharged. A visitation of the monastic houses of Norfolk in 1494 reviews Walsingham as one of the most disorderly houses in the diocese, along with the nearby Beast and Regis Priory and Langley Abbot Abbey. Richard Vowell was appointed Prior of Walsingham in 1514 and will go down as the last. King Henry VIII also visited the Priory, planting a tree to commemorate the canons who helped the birthing of his son who unfortunately died not long after. This tree stood on site for 500 years, until a storm blew it down in 2021. I visited Walsingham myself, and was given a piece of the tree which I keep in my collection. In 1535, an inventory of the Priory's gross income is completed, and estimated at £707, which in today's money would be around £313,000 annually. On the 4th of August, 1538, the Augustinian Priory to the Annunciation of the Blessed Virgin Mary is dissolved. The statue of the Virgin Mary is taken to London and burned. Between the 1530s and early 40s, Norfolk would see every major monastic house either sold, demolished or burnt to the ground, totalling over 100 priories, abbeys, friaries and other monastic churches. In the years that followed, each building was dismantled and sold off, or left to abandon. The dissolution of the monasteries destroyed Norfolk forever. In a few short years, the county went from the richest and most economically advanced area in all of Britain, and most of Europe, to nothing. In the centuries that followed, people fled the area, moving to cities which were prospering from the various industrial revolutions which offered new job prospects. As such, villages and towns of Norfolk were abandoned. The medieval parish churches were left to ruin, with no one remaining to take care of them. Between 100 and 200 medieval churches then became derelict, some now completely dismantled. Walsingham today remains as a quiet market village, proud of their religious roots, and does not shy away from the holy beginnings of the village. Walsingham is now known as an abbey, however it was never officially given abbey status, as an abbot never resided here permanently. Today you can walk amongst the scattered ruins within the nature park and also visit a part of the undercroft. For now, thanks for watching.